Okay, so I want to talk about whipping in off-road RC racing and how it can be used to your benefit. Uh, and basically, you know, you can go and watch other videos on uh, the actual, you know, whip process, if you will, or, you know, to see other cars whipping and what that actually looks like. And, you know, certainly if you go to your local RC track, uh, you'll probably find at least one person who thinks they're a professional and they try to whip their car because, you know, maybe they've been taught that that's the right thing to do or that it looks cool and so they try to do it on every jump. Uh, there's a specific application for whipping uh, and uh, I'm going to show you how it actually works, okay? So essentially what happens is on some track layouts you'll have a landing to a jump. So this here is a tabletop jump for, it, for example and the landing, it goes right into a turn. In this case, it's a right-hand turn. So what a, uh, say, classical approach would be, a classical racing line would be, is that you would, uh, you know, time, uh, or, or rather, get the car at the right speed uh, so that you, you land the jump perfectly, going perfectly straight. And then as you land the jump uh, on the lander, then you slow the car down and negotiate the turn. So that would be these black trajectory lines here. So this would be the car on the jump approach. And then this black box is the car in midair on landing. It's still landing straight. And then you take the corner. When you whip the car, what you're essentially doing is steering the car in midair. And so what ends up happening uh, if you whip the car correctly is that at first the car will, uh, uh, the, will point itself away from the turn and then you make another correction and it points the car towards the turn so that as you're landing uh, the car is already pointing in the direction of the corner and it saves you you know this much space uh, track space for actually making the turn so in theory it's supposed to allow you to set up for a corner more quickly basically using your airtime which is not used for any type of acceleration or for going faster uh, it's basically idle time when the car is in the air, and you're using that air time uh, productively to set up the car for the next corner, okay? Now, uh, whipping, uh, you know, to be uh, fair, uh, requires a ton of practice. It's a highly risky maneuver because if you don't do it perfectly, uh, it can actually cost you time because if you land it wrong, the car can flip over or maybe it slides out too much and then you end up actually losing time. But if you can execute it perfectly, it can be a very fast way around a track. So how does it work? Well, basically it relies on angular momentum. So, you know, if we consider a car going forward, uh, you know, looking top down, these are your two rear wheels, these are your two front wheels, and these wheels are spinning, okay? Now each wheel has a corresponding angular mom momentum. And the angular momentum uh, basically points outwards uh, from the direction of rotation of uh, the wheels, okay? So it's basically kind of like where the axis of rotation is, uh, that's the direction that the angular momentum points in, okay? So you can imagine, if you will, uh, taking an imaginary string and, and, and gluing it to the wheel nuts on each of the four wheels on the car and just pulling outwards on each one of those, okay? So while the car is in midair, if it's going perfectly straight and you're pulling outwards on all four of those strings, the car is gonna stay level. Okay? And then once you turn the front wheels, say, to the left, what's going to happen? Well, then the vector of the angular momentum on this wheel is going to start pointing backwards, and then on the right wheel is going to start pointing forwards. And so you're going to have a net force pointing toward the rear on the left side and toward the front on the right side, and it's going to want to make the car pivot a little bit to the left. And likewise, if you turn the car to the right, again, this is all in midair, uh, then the car is going to try to pivot a little bit to the right, okay? Uh, but the effect of angular momentum on making the car pivot is more complex than this because you also have caster angle associated with the steering geometry, okay? Now with a caster angle, you can go and watch uh, the tutorial video I have on caster, but basically what happens with caster is as the, the front wheels turn, they also end up changing in their camber angle, okay? So if we look at the car from the rear looking forward, okay? Uh, what would happen here is these two black boxes indicate the left and right rear tires. Those are perfectly straight up and down, okay? And their 
angular momentum vectors just point straight outwards, okay? And then if we're turning the front wheels to the left and we have an, 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 a positive caster angle, what that basically means is as we turn left, the inside wheel is going to have some, you know, I've, I've accentuated this a bit, but some positive camber and the outside wheel will have some negative camber. So not only, and, and the, the angular momentum vectors will, will change correspondingly. Again, they're orthogonal to the uh, rotation of the wheel. So the front inside wheel will have an angular momentum vector pointing a little bit downwards, and the outside wheel will point a little bit upwards. So as we turn the car left, not only is the car rotating top down toward the left a bit, but looking from the rear to the front, it's also pivoting like this. Okay, so what happens is um, when we go from this black box here to this red box here, looking from the rear of the car, we, we take the jump and then we turn left and then the car starts to do this and it also starts to rotate a little bit to the left. Okay, and then as we turn back towards the turn, okay, so you start by turning away from the turn and then you turn back towards the turn the forces reverse, okay? So now you have, uh, as you turn from left to right, then you have a net downward force on the right-hand side of the car and a net upward force on the right-hand side of the car when you sum up these angular momentums on either side. So the car is like this, and then when you turn to the right, uh, the car is gonna start rotating this way or pivoting this way, and it's gonna start turning this way because of the effects of uh, uh, the angular momentum along this plane as well as the top down plane okay so there's two effects going on there and so then you might think okay well what if I had zero caster angle in which case the effect of caster on making the car you know move back and forth like this uh, would be zero okay so all I have are just these two effects right here uh, in theory if you had zero caster angle uh, and zero uh, Oh, actually, kick up wouldn't really affect it, but yeah, zero caster angle. Uh, you could just take the jump and not even turn left, just turn into the turn, and that would just rotate the car a little bit, you know, toward uh, the direction of the turn, and then you land and you take off. But the problem is, uh, you know, 99.99% of your racing setups will have some amount of positive caster. On modern two wheel drive buggies, that's on the order of 25 to 30 degrees of caster typically. Um, and so you're going to have this effect as well. So realistically, if you took the jump and then in this case just turned towards the turn mid-air, if that was the first move you made, the car would rotate to the right a little bit, but it would also, uh, looking from the rear, it would pivot toward the right as well. So when you land, you'd be landing on the inside wheels. The car wouldn't be landing flat, okay? So the reason why when you uh, whip the car you have to turn away from the corner first and then back toward the corner uh, second is because you have to cancel out the effect of caster on, uh, I don't know if that's pitch or yaw, but on rotating the car left to right, okay, looking from the rear, okay? So basically, uh, when you turn away from the corner, the car does this, and then when you turn back towards the corner, the car moves this way, and those two effects will cancel out so that by the time the car lands, it's actually flat. Okay, and then you're basically, so these two cancel out, and then you're just trying to get the car to essentially pivot towards the apex of the corner upon landing. Okay, so that's the whole point of whipping. And I've tried it myself. I've occasionally been successful with it, uh, but generally I think it's too risky of a technique for someone of my skill level to use uh, reliably in racing. And I'm not exactly a low-skill driver, um, but the, the problem here is you have to get the timing perfect. And when you're you know, driving very fast, the amount of time the car spends in the air is actually not that significant. And you have to gear your brain to know when I take off, I have to turn away from the corner and then back towards the corner. And I have to time it just perfectly so that these two effects perfectly cancel out and the car lands perfectly flat and... Uh, you know, pointing towards the corner. And to get that just right for any particular corner is hard unless you're, you know, uh, a world champion driver. And even if you look at the top drivers, like the Ryan Mayfields and the Cavaliers and all those guys, 
uh, if you look closely at their driving, they don't whip a whole lot. Like they only whip when they actually need to. Most of the time, uh, you know, most of the drivers just take the jumps straight, nice and smooth and straight, because that's a reliable racing line. It's much lower risk. Uh, there's less chance of, of wiping out, okay? But if you need to go super aggressive and you're trying to save, you know, a few fractions of a second because you're trying to catch up to somebody or something, uh, then you might start whipping the car into corners. But you only really need to whip it if you're actually approaching a corner on the landing of a jump. If the jump is back here and the corner is up here, you don't need to whip the car. It would, it's just a waste of... I don't know, well, maybe not a waste of time because the car's still going, but it's just it's adding risk to your racing line, whipping the car if the jump is back here when you're not actually setting up for a turn. And I've seen this a lot with uh, uh, drivers who you know are just learning how to drive quickly, or they want to be fast, or they're basically trying to act like they're a better driver than they are. And so they think that, you know, maybe whipping is cool or something. And so every jump they take, they're, they're blipping the wheel left and right. And you see the wheels kind of do this. You know, if, you, if you're marshalling a corner and you pay attention to the front wheels uh, as the cars are jumping towards you or away from you, uh, you see a lot of drivers do that. And, you know, maybe it looks cool, but functionally it doesn't buy you anything unless you're actually setting the car up for a corner on the landing of a jump. If that's not part of your racing line, the jumps back here, uh, there's no point in whipping. It's pointless. Completely pointless. Okay, so <laughs> I hope this helps to explain a little bit about whipping and where it's actually useful. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching.